Hello kids, I'm Philip and welcome to Digital St. Matthews. I've got a question for you today. Who here likes dandelions? Well, what do you like about them? Maybe you like that you can pick them and that they look beautiful and you could bring a whole bouquet to someone you love. Or you could get the ones with the seeds the little fluffy ones that you can blow on and then see as they fly in the sky. Or maybe you like them that, because they look like a lion's mane, like their name, dandelion. Or maybe you eat them. I know a lot of people have. I remember as a kid, I have the, a fond memory of running through a field and watching as all the seeds fly into the sky and float up. Have you ever noticed a strange thing though? That some people don't like them? Maybe even your parents don't. They might even call it a weed and pull them up right away and get them out of their lawn or their gardens. Why do you think they do this? Maybe they don't like them or maybe the dandelion is not where it should be. Maybe that's it. Weeds can often be a plant that ends up hurting other plants or spreading so much that others can't grow as well. Or they can be nutrient hogs that greedily take up all the food out of the soil so that other plants can grow that well. This got me thinking. Sometimes things that are beautiful and could do so much good if in cooperation with everything around them they can also be so bad when they are not. It is also really important to have a good, that these things have a good relationship with the gardener. So this reminds us, whenever we see a dandelion, that sometimes we can be like weeds. We can push others out, we can be greedy, or we can hurt or wreck the garden, or we can be something different. We have the choice to be like plants that get along and become what we were meant to be. We could be the flowers that offer beauty or the trees that offer shade and fruit or the wheat that offers food that makes bread, seed and new life. The most important part of all of this is that we have a good relationship with our gardener who has a place for each of us and has given us a garden which has more than enough, more than we will ever need. And that gardener is Jesus. So if we turn to Jesus and ask for him to plant us where we should be, where we need to be, and then ask him how we need to act, maybe this world can be a beautiful garden. Doesn't that sound like a lovely idea? I think so. Well, can we all pray together, pray for that garden? Okay. Let us pray. You remember how to pray? Put your hands together, close your eyes, put your head down and focus on God. Lord God, Jesus Christ, our gardener, we thank you, Lord, that you tend this garden, that this garden has so much and so we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for our families, for the food you put in front of us, for all the fun that we can have and that you protect us even in these times. Lord God, please continue to guide us. Show us how to be the plants that we need to be. Plant us in the right place. And then, Lord, give us courage, give us strength, give us wisdom that we might follow you that we might know and do what we need to do. Lord God, we ask all this for you and for your beautiful garden. May we be those beautiful flowers that give life. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this talk. And remember, every time you see a dandelion, to think about this. God bless.